So Theft King recently released a video retracting his opinion on Indigo Park in a not so subtle way. Indigo Park is the least original mascot horror game ever made. Indigo Park is the greatest mascot horror game ever made. What the fuck? And seeing this got me thinking, was I wrong about Indigo Park? When I did my review, I compared this game to Ban Ban, and while I didn't completely hate the game, I was not the biggest fan. So, I decided to give this game another shot to see if I was wrong about Indigo Park. Now playing this game for a second time was an interesting experience, but one thing I noticed straight away was how linear it was. It kinda had a sister location vibe where everything was happening exactly the same way as it did the first time, and speedrunning through it made some sections a bit wonky, but I digress. Now this time around, I wanted to do more than just point out my problems with this game, and actually give some solutions to them as well. So for starters, I definitely think that this game has a lot of potential. It's nothing really special in terms of how hyped it was, but one thing that I think it absolutely nailed is Rambly. Rambly just carries the entire chapter and the entire game in retrospect, and he is just super charming and cute and funny. He is such a joy to be around, and the voice acting on him is absolutely incredible. I love how much personality he has, and even though he does have some moments where he seems off, I love how he isn't just completely shoving corporate crap down our throat. I'm glad he's just not another Andy Field ripoff. I especially love his interactions with the other characters, especially Lloyd, and on that note, all the voice acting for the mascots is pretty good as well. Now speaking of the mascots, I noticed on my repeat playthrough, that this was the root of my issues with the game. Now the mascots themselves are not terrible. On repeat playthrough, I actually found them all to be quite charming in their cutout form and thought they were good additions and that they had some potential. However, when we look at the monster versions, I can't help but feel the designs were a little lazy or at the very least were just a bit uninspired. The worst design is Lloyd. Lloyd from his cutout seemed like a super charming and funny character who had a massive ego, and then the monster version just turned him into a normal lion, which I didn't really like. I feel like he could have benefited from a design closer to his cutout. Molly McCaw is a decent design as well, but at the same time there wasn't really any personality given and before I contradict myself, if we look at my critique of Five Nights at Freddy's with them being given too much character and personality to the animatronics, I think that Indigo Park would have worked a lot better if they had actually had some personality. The animatronics from Final Fantasy Freddy's are robots that shouldn't be able to move, and that's what makes them so terrifying. Puppy Playtime is another one I could use as an example that has a lot more personality to their characters because it's established that the toys are able to move and talk, and there isn't an enormity, and it's part of the horror. The animatronics were programmed, while the toys were free thinking. I think that Indigo Park could have benefited from showing off the personality more, considering how much it is built up during the railroad section. However, one thing that Indigo Park didn't forget to do was show off their characters at every single opportunity possible, to the point that by the time that you actually have to avoid them as a threat, they have overstayed their welcome. There are so many appearances of Molly McCall to the point that you are able to stare directly at her. It makes you feel like the only reason she hasn't tried to kill you is because she doesn't actually want to, and instead trying to avoid you until she's literally backed into a corner and deciding to kill you just in order to avoid dangering herself again. Which I mean, it could be a cool thing, but you know, I don't know. Because of how much we see her too, it makes it that when she does actually finally chase us, it feels underwhelming as we know what to expect. Lloyd suffers a similar treatment as we encounter him at least four times in the span of three minutes, which makes his eventual attack just kinda lame by comparison. Plus, we are ready for it, so it loses its ability to scare the player. I think this also extends to the end of the chapter with Finley. This guy appearing is meant to be an awesome way to end the chapter, but because of how much you see Molly and Lloyd, it just doesn't hit as hard as it should. Now in terms of how to improve this, I think 100% make the chapter only about one character and only show them in the monster form, maybe Molly as an example. Also, let's dial her appearances back a bit to maybe one or two appearances before the big reveal. If I had to pick two, I would pick the doorway right after Lloyd's attack and when we exit the pipe after completing the first section of the landing pad puzzle. Although I would change the layout of the maze here, so that instead of entering the pipe, we would actually have to follow her, which would be way more stressful as we are literally following the threat. While the character designs are what they are, and I won't say how to change them, making them fit the cutouts would have been cool, but I mean, who knows what the story is actually going to turn into. Now onto the gameplay and linear path for the player. While I think that the linear design is completely fine, 
it would be cool if you had more variety. We basically just walk forward for an hour until we get to the landing pad, so it would be cool if we had some more variety besides just walking and two gear puzzles. This game is literally just a walking sim, and while yes, it is a chapter one, it's a boring one at that. Poppy Playtime Chapter 1 and even Garden of Van Van have more parts to it, and the more things that you actually needed to do as well. While I do like that this game isn't secret with how you need to progress, at times it does feel very much like they're basically just handing you all the answers. And I think turning it back a little bit would have made a huge difference. Also, the wall caving in is seriously a joke, but whatever. Now on to what in my mind has to be the worst part of the game, the actual chase sequence. Now, I don't want to hate on this game for having a chase sequence, because even though that they are a bit overdone in these types of games, I think that they are fine enough additions, and this game has been in the works for a while, so whatever. But, oh my god, is this chase sequence boring, and honestly, it's slow. It overstays its welcome, and there's not really anything happening. You're kind of just following the path with nothing interesting to look at besides a vent section that appears at some point. It's also kind of dumb just how long this chase is, especially how little we see of anything really going on. We never really get to look at Molly because if we do, we're gonna die. And although I'm not a huge fan of the death animation, as it is not scary in the slightest, I do like the death screens. Now the music choice here doesn't fit either, and this section pretty much sums up my biggest issue with the game. If this is meant to be a horror game, it completely failed. It's not scary at all, and this music definitely proves that. I mean, it slaps! But it's not scary like a chase sequence should be. You're more dancing to it than anything else. Also, Molly dying at the end, if I'm being completely honest, was unnecessary, and it might have been cooler if the door just shut and Molly didn't die, because then there would have been more use, but I don't know what the future of this game is, so I don't really know. Now, obviously, to improve this section, like I said, do what you did before with just having Molly appear once or twice, and make the music actually fit the scene. It would have made it way more scary. Now look, I don't hate this game, and honestly, it was actually a fun little adventure, but only because of Rambly, and because of how I like seeing how much they try and fail to scare you. I, but I do think that this game has potential. I just think that this game is a bit basic, and really, there isn't anything special to this game. I don't want to discourage the creator from ever making another game, or continuing with this series, because you can tell some love was put into this game, but it's nowhere near as good as people say it is. I am, however, looking forward to Chapter 2, as I want to see what comes of it, as the devs are taking feedback, which I think is amazing. I want to see this series succeed, because it has a way better story and way more love than any of the cash grab franchises. Plus, this game is free, so, like, you can't really hate it that much. I mean, if you had to pay money for this, I'd be way more mad, and maybe Theft King's original theory would have actually, you know, stood up a bit. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you subscribe for more. I think Indigo Park has this potential. What do you guys think? Also, thank you guys for nearly 8,000 subscribers. Keep it up. I'm trying to hit 10k by my birthday, which is July 14th, so keep it up, guys. Love you guys so much. I'll see you guys in the next video.